So Anwar, our brother Anwar said, we can take many steps away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it is only one step that will bring you closer to him. And this is true. We see from the story that when in the Quran when Hud alayhi salam when Hud alayhi salam reminded told his people to come back to Allah, he told them that because at the time we see that the people were they are very far away from Allah, right? They worship the idols, they commit the greatest sin, which is shirk. And they're very ignorant and very arrogant upon this. They were not even ignorant that much, they were arrogant because they knew that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was their Lord, but they refused to worship him alone. They worshiped him with others. So Hud alayhi salam, what he told them? He said that all my people ask forgiveness of your Lord and then repent to him. He will send you from the sky abundant rain, a lot of rain, and he will add to your strength more strength and not turn away as much of me. So if all of, if they listen to him and they start to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by him, by himself, and they ask for forgiveness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that he would add a lot of blessings towards them. He would add, he would give them a lot of rain and that would increase them in strength on, on top of the reward of the hereafter, correct? So, mashallah, Anwar gave a very good point. We can take a lot of steps from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but only one step close to him will bring you a lot of goodness. Anis, I think you want to bring your point? Yeah, um, I was going to say always trust in Allah whenever you're in a situation where you're backing against the wall. Because at the end of the day, Allah is a provider for everything. And you may feel like you're against the wall, but Allah is all wise and knows that have a different plan for you. Our brother Anis made a very good point. He said, always have trust in Allah. We see from this story that Hud alayhi salam, he, he only depended on Allah and he had trust in him. Even though most of his people, and remind you, these people are very strong people, the strongest people in the world, that they were all against him. But even so, he still depended and trusted upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by himself. That even he told them, they can do whatever they want, even without mercy. But he will still depend on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So thank you for bringing up that very good point. Ahmed? Uh, one really good part I liked was how he was conveying the message of Islam to his people, even though it was really like hard headed and not listening to him at all. I like that part a lot. So Ahmed, our brother Ahmed, he made a very he made another very good point, just like everyone else has something. He said that he liked how the Prophet Hud alayhi salam kept reminding his people about the message of Islam, even though they would not listen. So we see that Prophet Hud is very consistent. And that what we can learn from this is because like our Imam Imam Shafi, may, may Allah preserve him, he made in his khutbah yesterday during Jummah, he said that he was an ummah of da'wah. So all our job is to propagate the deen. Whether people accept or deny, that's up to them. That's exactly what Hud alayhi salam also told his people. He told his people that he was free from what they were doing. He was free from the evils that they committed. He was free from the shirk that they were doing. He said, I have conveyed the message to you, and that's all that matters. So we should take from that also. Because all of us, you know, we live in this society where I believe they say what? <laughs> our job to always, you know, give them reminders of goodness, remind them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only deity worship worthy of worship, and that if that guidance only comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if people accept or deny, that's up to them. Your job is only to convey the message, correct? Yeah. I think we seem want to put a point. Uh, yeah, I was just going to kind of piggyback off that, um, is that, like what I learned a lot is the opportunities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us for the people to come back and, and just take that step forward, like you said, that one step back. And how um Prophet Hood Ali said I'm like really kept telling them over and over again, you know, you can come back, you can come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you can believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that just reminded me of like, you know, even if you stray far away, like you said, like you have so many opportunities to come back. That's a very good point. We like a lot for that. So Wasim, our brother Wasim, he he added some points to the previous points about how 
no matter how far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are, you can always come back. And it only takes that, just that one step. If you're sincere, then you want to do good and come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He's going to make that very, very easy for you. We see, we also know from Al Islam that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and the especially merciful. And we see that many enemies of Islam, they always try to portray Islam in the media as, you know, a religion of, you know, being barbaric, a religion that's very violent, and this and that. And they try to portray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a very unjust God. When that's false. Because if you compare Islam and every other religion, there's no the there's no what's called we, we see it and we compare what we believe in about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compared to other people believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that in Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he forgives all sins. He forgives every sin if you're a Muslim, except for shirk. Unless you ask for forgiveness and leave that shirk, correct? So we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful and especially merciful. So we should learn from this. And we should always keep that in mind. Because one thing that shaitan tricks us with is that Whenever we are in a low in a low point in life, or we're committing a lot of bad things, shaitan tries to mislead us saying that you're too far from Allah. There's no point in going to the masjid, no point in worshiping him. Sometimes, you, sometimes some people, they find themselves, they haven't prayed in a long time. And then when that person have, has thoughts of prayer, they're like, I haven't prayed in a long time, what's the point of praying now? That's false, because it's never too late. Uh, anybody else? Muhammad? Um, something that I found interesting is, uh, I guess, um, consistent denial will get you nowhere. So, yeah, it's kind of like the opposite of what we said. So, our brother Muhammad said that consistent denial will get you nowhere. So, from this we see, especially from this story, we see that the people are they're very consistent in denying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them a blessing of being strong, very strong. But this was a blessing and it was also a test. Because instead of taking advantage of this blessing and taking advantage of this test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them, they, they increased in disobedience and in evilness. They thought that the strength that they had, nobody would be able to take it away from them. But they forgot who gave them their strength. Who is stronger, the person who is strong or the person who gave them that strength? So consistent now will get you nowhere. And we also see that even even today, a lot of people they have very consistent denial, right? And that's one characteristic that we should not have. We should always be open-minded. We should always be inclined. Even even when somebody reminds you to do something, don't say no. Just say inshallah, even if it's hard for you to do. Just say inshallah. Because if you have sincere, if you have a sincere intention to do something good, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to make it easy for you. And he's pretty much just what I was going to say. Like, a lot of people who have earned that consistent denial and don't even want to try to educate themselves and prepare themselves and equip themselves to pick up the Quran and read it. So I feel like they do that just to. They're afraid of being, you know, being on the correct path. So they just want to stay open it up and read it. They're going to see the flaws that they have and the things that are doing wrong. So I feel like that's part of the reason why they have to always bring up this topic. MashaAllah, and he's made a very good point. And that's true because, you know, as Muslims, we're taught to be real with ourselves, right? We cannot lie to ourselves. You know, a lot of people, they like to lie. But what about the person that lies to his own self? Like, that, that's very bad, tell me not. So you should always be real with yourself, even if even if you have a hard time doing something, just know what you're doing is wrong, and have correct intention to, inshallah, to rectify that, and to do good, inshallah. I don't know if sisters are very comfortable where they are, or if they wanna sit this side of the the kitchen, maybe they want to be part of this uh, conversation. If they have some questions, we want you to be part of this. And if you, you can still be alone, we have this uh, side of the, we call it uh, our food, the pantry. 
You can just sit here and ask some questions without men seeing you yet. So, so a few things I want to add. Alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala rasulullah. The many people are asking themselves, especially youth, that I love Allah, right? They are saying that I love Allah. And uh, really, you are making a lot of efforts, right? Towards, they are fine, right? You are making efforts, both girls and boys, men and women. Come sit with me again. You are making a lot of efforts to ensure that you love Allah. One of the examples is that you are present in the masjid, doing the outside and cold, right? Nobody want to be outside. Too Indian cold. But subhanAllah, you communicated and uh, you agreed that you should meet in the masjid, perform Salatul Maghrib in Jama'ah, spend some time in the masjid listening to the story of Nabi, Nabi, Nabi Hud, alayhi salam. And then again, you know, catch up with the Jama'ah to, yeah, together or in congregation. And so, this is an effort, right? Like in how do we sustain our efforts? I think that is that is a, a, a three million dollar question. Not a million dollar question. How do I as a Muslim or how do I as a Muslim do what? Sustain my love, my thirst for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because you will see people, for example, in Ramadan. Iman is right there, right? Iman is higher. Iman is on top, is increasing, right? And then immediately after Ramadan, on Eid, first day, second day, you know, first month, what happened? You see that Masajid are empty, right? You see that, you know, Iman has decreased, right? Yeah, and all the things that people are doing have also, have also gone down. Does that make sense? Okay, so think about that. So how do we sustain our love for Allah? How do we sustain our Iman? How do we sustain our love for our Deen? And how do we sustain our love for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? I want to start with Hadith then I'm going to give you a roadmap inshallah. Okay? I'm going to give you a roadmap. You can record easily, don't you? I'm not going to call FBI. Good? Yeah, it's our party. If I give them your name. <laughs> so, there is hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Thalathun man kunna fihi wajada bihinna halawat al-iman. That there are three qualities. How many? Three, three. Three. One, two, three. That is how good teacher Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was. Sometimes he went with numbers. Just to attract the attention of the audience. When you know when you say five, somebody starts counting with you, right? When you say two, somebody starts counting with you. When you say six, somebody so that was that is also prophetic, right? Way of educating. So he say talatun. That there are three qualities. Man kunna fihi. Whoever has those three qualities, wajada bihinna halawat al iman. He says that by them he or she will attain and obtain the strictness of iman. Do you understand that? How many qualities? It's open. Whoever has them, which means whoever acquires them. Whoever works on them. Straight, right? The first one he says, Ayakuna Lahu, Ayakuna Lahu, Mimma Siwahu. That Allah and His Messenger, simple terms, that this person, the first quality, should love Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. Loving Allah. And his messenger more than anything else, which means a priority in your life is loving Allah or striving to love Allah 
and his messenger more than anything else, even more than yourself, more than your parents, more than ice cream, sorry. More than anything else that you think of, there is no way that your love for those things should surpass your love for Allah and, and his messenger. The gospel. So, the question remains with you. How then should I make efforts? What are the mechanisms that I should put in place to ensure that I love Allah and his messenger more than anything else? Right? Number two is أَنْ يُحِبَّ الْمَرْءُ لَا يُحِبُّهُ إِلَّا لِلَّهِ That you, quality number two, when you love someone, you should not love him except that you love him or her for the sake of Allah. Allahu Akbar. You love someone only for the sake of, to the extent that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that إِذَا أَحَبَّ الرَّجُلُ أَخَاهُ that when a person loves his brother or, or his sister, when a sister loves his bro her brother or, or, or a sister, who, you or he or she should inform him that, brother, I love you for the sake of Allah. But you should mean it, right? You don't send somebody, Habibi, Habibi, on yourself, but behind you, you stab him with a big knife. You don't send somebody, Habibi, I love you, Allah, I love you, subhanAllah, but you go behind him or her, and you backbite him, you tarnish his name, you gossip, that is not love for the sake of Allah. You don't say somebody, I love you for the sake of Allah, and you see him or her doing something wrong, and you deprive yourself of being a true brother or a sister by not advising him, but then you go elsewhere in public, in an absence, then you start saying, oh, that person is doing this and this. That is not... You are not fulfilling the essence of love. Loving your brother or your sister for the sake of Allah also means that you advise him. But you use what is called prophetic way of correcting mistakes and prophetic way of encouraging him to do, do more good when if, if or he or he, if she or he is doing good. Good, right? So we love one another for many reasons, right? Basketball, this and that. It's okay, we love one another for, you know, we love all these uh, fast cars, right? Ferrari is the oldest. What is the new one? That one, man, yes. And they're still manufacturing others. No names, you know. But, but the real love is that you love someone for the sake of, when you see him, he reminds you about Allah. When you see him, he encourages you to follow your deed just by being in his company. Does that make sense? And it's very, very important, my brothers and sisters, to choose to be picky about your friends and company. One thing you cannot choose. You cannot choose whether Muslims, men and women, are your brothers or sisters or not. Allah has established that. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ إِخْوَةً That verily, all believers, all Muslims are but brethren. They are brothers and sisters. But one thing, you can choose. Islam allows you to choose who is your friend, who is your companion. That one is your choice. So you need really to be picky. As It doesn't mean that you should look down upon others. It doesn't mean that you should uh, belittle others, right? It doesn't mean that if somebody doesn't look like you look, or if somebody doesn't come from a country where you are coming, or if a person doesn't share the same interest, you know, just a hobby, okay? It can be soccer or something else. You should tell him, brother, Islam allows me to be picky. This is not what I mean. Who is a true friend? Who is a true... Who connects you to Allah? You understand that? So you have to love people who are rich, you know, around you only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the most permanent love. And I want to conclude with this. Yeah, and under this, then I give you the third point. Then I'm going to give you a roadmap on how to sustain your, your love for Allah his message and your deal, right? Look, there is temporary friendship. One ends in this dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in Quran. And another one is that which is established in this dunya as a bridge. Okay? You established as a bridge because you want to cross to Akhirah. So that you, 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 it's going to 
be sustainable and more permanent. Most of people are choosing temporary ones. That is why, oh, you know, so it's Muhammad, he was my buddy before, but nowadays. Khadija, you know, she was my friend before, but nowadays. So there is this friendship and companionship that doesn't end. In fact, it grows stronger. Again, this hadith gives you that, I mean, a hint. It is a friendship and companionship that was established on La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah. Tubbullah wa Rasul. And it was established on love from Allah and His Messenger. So Allah says in Quran, Al Akhillahu Yawma idim ba'duhum li ba'din aduhun illa al muttaqin. That companions and buddies who came from the same hood, you know, uh, those folks, you know, those who said you are my friend and my friend on the day of Qiyamah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that such friendships will do what? They will in fact turn to be enemies of one another. They will be blaming one another. It's you who misled me. It's you who, you know, misguided me. It is you who, you know, they will be blaming one another. Lakin Allah say, illa al there is what is called harful istifna, exception here. And he say, except those who love one another in the light of taqwa, in the light of taqwa of Allah, which means following the commandments of Allah and avoiding the prohibitions. That friendship, Allah says that it's going to do what? To the extent that they will be called as friends, Ya ibadi, la khawfun alaykum al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call them, will honor them, will graduate them. Oh my slaves, there should not be, there will not be any fear on you, and also there will be no sadness. No grief, no sadness. So you see, it's a journey that you are traveling even with your friend. Wallah. So a brother who loves or a sister who loves other brothers or sisters only for the sake of and third quality, listen to the third quality. An yakraha, an yauda fil kufri, ba'da an ankadahullahu min, kama yakrah an yuqdafa fil nar. This is the person who has the first quality, and he's working on it, morning and evening, that he loves Allah and his messenger more than anything else. Number two, he makes sure that he loves people only for the sake of, and number three, he hates he abhors to return to kufr. You understand that? He hates and dislikes and abhors to return to kufr after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has saved him or her from, from it. As he or she hates to be thrown in the hellfire. Don't we hate to be thrown in the hellfire? The famous dua, which is one of the top adi'iyah, that Rasul used to make a very precise to us, Rabbana Atina, Fid Dunya Hasana, Wafil Akhirati Hasana, Wakina Adabana. O our Lord, O Allah, grant us good in this dunya, grant us good on the day of Qiyamah, save us from Jahannam and admit us in what? In Jannah. رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَا وَقِينَ عَلَبَنَا So those are three qualities. Can you mention those three qualities? Then I want to give you how to sustain your love for Allah, His Messenger, and your deen. Bismillah. It's very easy. It's not going to take uh, three, four minutes. Can you remember three qualities that you should have? If you have whoever has those three qualities, by them or through them, he or she will attain the sweetness of Iman. The first one. Loving Allah and His Messenger. And living something. More than anything else. Right? Number two. He says loving someone or your friend only for the sake of? MashaAllah, you know, there is, there is that I love you, I love you stuff, you know. With Ashley, Astaghfirullah. Uh, sisters with Astaghfirullah. Uh, haram, right? I love you for the sake of? Ah. Uh, got about 5 cents and 50 cents and Snoop Dogg and 
those are that love things they are singing and stuff in the gospel. You know, you, you see where love. Love for the sake of Allah. Now, what else? Now. Uh, I want to add a, I want to add a point to the second point that uh, our brother Ahmed said. Um, loving our friends for the sake of Allah, correct? So we all have friends. We all love them supposedly, correct? And our friends love us supposedly, correct? So if we truly have love for our friends, and our so-called friends truly has love for us, we want the best for each other, correct? And what is the best for each other? To be admitted to paradise, correct? So, you know, as true friends, we want the best for each other. We want the best for each other in this life and the after. We want to make sure our friends succeed, that they're not, you know, they don't live a bad life, that they get their best education. We should advise our friends towards that. With our friends, you know, they they have hopes of good things, you know, something that's healthy. For example, hooping, ba playing basketball. We would rather push our friends to succeed in that. At the same time, worshiping Allah, but to succeed in that, in things such as, you know, becoming good at playing basketball or achieving the most amount of education as we can, right? You know, our friends want, they have aspirations to, to get their bachelors, to get their masters, to get their PhD, you know, to become the next basketball superstar, things that are... Uh, halal and healthy, correct? So we should we should push them towards those good things instead of pushing them towards, you know, bad things, such as wasting time, you know, doing things that's not healthy, eating bad, you know, the things, you know, some people, we see, you know, I'm pretty sure we all know this, many friends, they they push their friends to do, to take on bad habits, such as smoking, partying, drinking, right? Is that a true friend? No. And if anybody advises you towards things like that, those people don't care about you. You should you should have people around you, people that love you and that want the best for you. And at the same time, you yourself, you should want the best for your friends. And at the end of the day, we all know that we will all die one day, right? And we want all our friends to be admitted to paradise, to have ease in the grave, right? So don't wait until the day your friend, you know, passes away, because people pass away early or later in life. And how many people do we know that pass away early in life, correct? So, before that happens, we should advise our friends to do good things and to do things that will help them in that when they pass away in their grave and on the Day of Judgment. So, what was the third quality? Loving Allah and His Messenger more than anything else earns you the sweetness of Iman. Number two, loving your brother or your sister only for the sake of Allah. And number three, who remember? Very crucial. Hating and dislike, disliking to return to kufr, right? Returning to kufr in action and words. What you say, is it Islamic or kufr or shirk? What you do, is it Islamic or kufr or, or shirk? Wallah. And this is the easy part of our deen that you are a watcher over yourself. How is that? need to bring yourself into the book here. Yeah. Every day. Before you say something, you should ask yourself as a Muslim. You don't even need for dad and who you know to do. Don't wait for them. Ask yourself because Allah created you. We just use parents, you know, as a, as a how do you call it, divasa, or a means of transportation to bring you into him. He brought Rasulullah through Abdullah, and as soon as he is, how long? Two months old in his mother's womb, that is gone. And Amin is giving back to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as soon as he reaches how, how, how old of age? Six, he's gone. Subhanallah, he did not live with his mom for more than two years. Four years with Halim. Right? So Allah is showing us through Rasul that he's only using parents as a vessel to bring us in this world. Because, you know, had he will, maybe we would have been... Uh, Children of a tree, of monkeys, of lion, you know, lion king, right? Uh, I didn't say, I didn't say super, super king, king, super, I didn't say that, I say lion, king, king, lion. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought us in dunya through parents, right? Now, you need to go further and beyond just parents. And this, this is this is thinking small, Allah. 
what is Abu or what is Dad going to say? And what is Mom going to say? No, you, what are you saying regarding your relationship with Allah Azza wa Jalla? You can imagine Mom is here and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking her her own question. Questions that matters. Then Dad is here and Allah is going to have a secret, private talk with her. Then Mom is not there and Dad is not there. Then Allah says, Ya Muhammad, Ya Abdullah. You're going to have a private word conversation with Allah. That should worry you. So you should hate, this is the third quality, returning to kufr after Allah has saved you from that. Do you know how greatest ni'mah, blessing it is for you to be a Muslim? You know Islam is the only deen that no one, not Imam Shafi, not Mufti, not can tell you that, get out of Islam. Do I have authority to do that? No. But other religions, they can do it. Because it belongs to people. Huh? A church belongs to somebody. And this is except deen of Allah. Allah has chosen who is Sabakum. Allah has chosen you. He has chosen you to be Muslim as an individual, even before a community. So you need to bear that individual responsibility of I love Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. Show it, demonstrate it by action. I love my brothers and sisters only for the sake of Allah. And number three, you cannot contradict your belief of loving Allah and his messenger and your deed more than anything else by doing acts of kufr and shirk or saying words of shirk and so quality number three, you should hate to return to kufr in any way after Allah has saved you from that kufr and shirk as you hate to be thrown or punished in Jahannam on the day of are we good? Loving Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. Quality number two, loving your brother or your sister for the sake of Allah. And number three, hating to return to kufr and shirk after Allah has saved you from it, as you hate to be thrown in Jahannam on the day of. So, can I give you a quick answer? How do you sustain this? How do you sustain your love? For Allah and His Messenger more than anything else. How do you sustain loving Ummah of Rasulullah for the sake of Allah? How do you sustain not committing haram and shirk and kufr as you had to be thrown in Jahannam? There are four ways. Each one of you, if you understand this, Alhamdulillah, is one, a Muslim must spare time to seek Islamic knowledge. Does that make sense? al ilmu talab al you cannot improve you, mashallah, you are young intellectuals. Future of this country, Allah, you're going to colleges and you know, and you want to graduate, and you know, everybody wants to graduate, right? Can you be a professor without dedicating some time to go to school? Can you be an engineer? Can you be you can't you can't be a pilot without likewise you have to dedicate some time to learn about your deen. Al ilmu seeking knowledge. And seeking knowledge means وَهُوَ مَعَرِفَةُ اللَّهِ وَمَعَرِفَةُ نَبِيِّهِ وَمَعَرِفَةُ الدِّينِ الْإِسْلَامِ بِالْأَدِلَّةِ You have to seek knowledge about Allah, your deen and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what is the first uh, tool that you should have? Seeking what? Knowledge. Wallahi, don't take it for granted. Do not think that, oh, I used to go to Duxi and uh, I think I'm, I'm grown up now. And I, No. If there is knowledge that you should seek until your death is knowledge about Allah, your deen, and Rasulullah. So put that in mind. I want to seek Islamic knowledge. And nowadays, you have no excuse. You can seek this knowledge in your own bedroom through the phone, right? Yes or no? Internet, man, there are causes there. And we are here. We are offering causes in this sense. Sign in, sign, 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 say, I, what time can I come and learn basics and then grow in it. The second point on how to yani, sustain your love for Allah and His Messenger, your love for yani, loving people for the sake of Allah and, and hating to go back to kufr and shirk after Allah has saved you from it as you had to be punished in Jahannam. Number two is al-amal. When you seek knowledge, you know, a Muslim has to put that knowledge in, into practice. Prove, oh. na? Apply the knowledge. Apply the knowledge. Speak English, man. 
from Texas. Light and knowledge, big knowledge. I just had that uh, in Obama was talking some minutes ago. Light, yes, we can. God starts with it. Does that make sense? Seeking knowledge, number two. I'm using simple terms for that. This brother is complicating my talk here. Applied. Acting upon your knowledge. Nobody should push you towards that. Yourself. Am I not a Muslim? I am a Muslim. Who chose me to be a Muslim? Allah. What should I be doing today five times? Have I prayed? Ask yourself those questions. Apply the knowledge. And number three is what is called ad-da'watu ilayhi. Every Muslim, as you are making effort to acquire any portion of knowledge, you don't need to go to, you know, to travel to higher Islamic university if you cannot, right? But at least make it a point that every day, every week, I want to add something. I want to learn something new of my team, right? So, as you acquire that knowledge, and you apply that knowledge, you should also share that knowledge. You should invite people towards that knowledge. Wallahi, wallahi, it is this generation that is going to change America. Let's make America great for the first time. Wow. <laughs> Trump failed. He's out, man. Everybody's demonstrating in, in D.C. now. 10,000 people gathered. Oh, elections were stolen. Inna lillahi. Inna lillahi rajirullahi. Sorry, brother, if you loved him. But he was just a one-time president. He hurt Muslims so much. That is the reality. Now, may Allah guide Biden to be a Muslim. He loves Muslims. So, so the point is, <laughs> the job we have is to make America and the world greater for the first time, again. How are you going to do that? With the knowledge that you acquired. How are you going to change this, this society? They want to see Islam about us. Previously, we did not talk to them. We lived with them. Okay? As I said on, on khutbah, we gave them our traditional food, but we never gave them the most important thing in their life. What is that? La ilaha. Who's going to give it to them? It's you, Americans. It's you, men, under freedom of religion and freedom of expression. Why can't you use those tools? Don't be shy to say I'm a Muslim. In fact, you cannot hide as a Muslim here. They know you. Your neighbors know you're a Muslim. You're a Muslim, right? They know you. So acquire knowledge. They want to see that knowledge through our action. Apply Islam. If they are neighbors, you know, fulfill their rights. At school, let them see that you are different. Right? How you talk, how you behave, how you eat, how you socialize, how kind you are, how generous you are. Wallah! Number, number three, spread the message of Islam. Be part of da'wah. Be part of... If you don't talk, distribute pamphlets. How is that? The least you can do for us tonight, use your Facebook or... Uh, or uh, Instagram or Twitter, tweet at least one ayah. Tell something from that mufti and from this. Yes, yes, please. You don't know how 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 it, it impacts yeah, in people's lives positively. You can do a lot. We can change the face of uh, social media. We can change the face of, of just spreading the good word. How many people are taking shahada through social media? A lot, right? How many people? Yeah, and as a result of technology. And number four, my brothers, as you are sharing and educating and spreading, this is not only work of Sheikh and Imam. No. I can do any other job outside there. Who says that I should sit in the masjid and, and say that, you know, I should die, you know, getting my risk through this? No. But each one of us has to do something. Number four, as sabru ala al-adha fi. We have to be very patient because you will be annoyed. People, you can see, Islam is spreading, doesn't make some people happy. You know that. You know that it doesn't make some people happy. The fastest growing religion in the world is what? Well, lie, that is the reality. So, you can see in Denmark, you see, you see as, uh, what is the name of this president? Macaroni? <coughs> macaroni? You know Macaroni? Isaac Allah, okay, that Macaroni. Faster stuff he was. He's, he's talking about the, the decline of Islam and what and what. No, we need to be patient, right? I did expect the youth to, 
to take the knife and slaughter the teacher, you know, we, we don't support things like that. We Muslims, we were very annoyed when Rasul is insulted, when Rasul is degraded. We are annoyed. You understood through hadith that you should love Allah and his messenger more than. So who are they to insult Rasul? But if Rasul is insulted, if each one of us is going to take knife and slaughter somebody. <laughs> Rasul was insulted many times, right? We need to use the prophetic way of dealing with, with such people, with the love, with wisdom. And also we need to be stern and tell them that this is not right. You cannot, you know, but, but each one of us should not carry a knife and start, you know, slaughtering everybody. And this is not the best thing. We have a bigger mission. People like, yeah, ignorant people like Macaroni and who, we put them aside and we focus on many people who are meant for guidance. So those are four ways of sustaining you are. You are love for Allah and his messenger and your deed. Can you mention the first one? How are you going to sustain this? By doing four things. One, knowledge. seeking knowledge. Is that Allah okay? Knowing Allah, Rasul and Knowing your deen. Number two, this brother has this answer, man. It's lying that knowledge. Number three, spreading, spreading, spreading informing, educating, creating awareness. Don't be shy again. Don't be shy to say, I'm a Muslim, the least you can say. Don't be shy to tell a friend, can we share? Can I tell you who, who, who I am and what I believe in? I know in some places it's restricted. You don't bring your religion here at work and live. But you can take him for a, take him to Starbucks and talk to him, invite him home, meet somewhere and talk to him about don't be shy or at least accomplish what they say about Islam. What is Islam? Who is Muhammad? So educate and share. Number four, be patient. We need to be patient now than before. Right? For is that and uh, any question? Any question? And don't be scared of me. One thing you can discuss, your body. Safe, be good. Jagmullah, okay, and for coming. Please make this place your home. You want to do some homework, you want to study, we have pouches there. Bring one, put it here, plug in your laptop, put it over. We have kitchen there, we have microwave. You want to bring something from outside, you want to prepare something here, make this place to be yours now. Always. Always. The number is 1974. Please, if you just want to relax, not just playing ping pong, we have, those couches are yours. Sisters, if you want to relax here, not just when we are having programs, make this place to be your place. It is a youth center. We have Wi-Fi here, let me know if you, if you need the number, maybe I need to to, to hang it here. We have. We are paying for the internet. You want to have a group study, you just want to meet and, you know, relax. Make this to place to be your place, inshallah. Barakallah. It's around to the chef said. Please keep that in mind. You know, Alhamdulillah, you know, we have one group that does make this place their place. That does make this place their home. You know, we have, you know, everybody that knows, most of our friends, you know, Brother Hassan, Brother Mary, Arsay, you know, I always see them here, mashallah, they do their homework here. Library is a closed, right? Everybody needs a place to study together. Most libraries are closed, and it's, it's social distance and all that. But with all these uh, hardships in place, you know, there's an easy place, you know, come do your homework, there's tables, there's chairs. Also, you know, make, like you said, make this place your home. You see, mashallah, Mohammed, Hassan, Wada, Arsay, I see them every night over here. There's the majority teenagers over here praying Isha al Maghrib, creating God for you in the place. So come here anytime, don't be shy. You know, get some ideas, take care of the space because it's not a big facility where we have, you know, galleries, this and that. You know, it's only uh, daily mission goers that take care of this place, such as you and I. So don't be shy, and you know, you'll get, you'll reap big rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Jazakallah khairan for coming today because. You know, there's something that we do usually every two weeks, except this one was after a month, I believe, or three weeks, something like that, correct? Yeah. So it doesn't hurt to come from, well, we came here at Mogul, 4.45, 6.30, we've been here less than two hours, correct? Yeah. 
and you know we spend most of our days doing a lot of other stuff so every two weeks just to be here one hour two hours you know being with your friends you know usually eat some pizza or maybe have like today donuts you know it's nice and we've seen other states the dawa amongst the youth is like 10 times bigger than this but inshallah we'll reach it there one day also correct so inshallah be consistent you know always be sincere and provide a good example for friends jazakallah for and anyone who want to register with me i'm back i'm teaching islamic studies six subjects i will take you you know we will take it yani how do you call it baby steps don't feel shy register with me and let us start studying once a week for one hour is it a problem once a week if you want a class as a class like this i can do it agree amongst yourselves then we start from the beginning but together some of you are a little bit advanced here if you want to register with me individually please do it now six subjects a one year course no pressure Inshallah, I'm not going to pinch you. I promise. I don't want to go to jail. So keep that in mind. You have it here. We have the board. I need, want you to have a book. Five in one. Eh? And come and start with your friend or your, your brothers. Wallah. Within one year, you will be surprised. Not only to be a sheikh. No. You're going to have a family tomorrow. You want to guide them, right? You want to move to Japan, you want to remain a Muslim, how are you going to survive in China, in Korea, in Africa? Islam is that light, brothers. Please keep this in mind. This is the only center that is going to offer those courses for now. Six subjects, slowly, fiqh, tawheed, hadith. Hey, brothers. Jazakumullah khair. Sure. Yeah. from the Islamic studies, you know, there's already students around here that study. And on top of, you know, how Sheikh has advised us to, six times studies among one of our senior students, to say a hadith about the virtues of seeking knowledge. Bismillah. Uh, Ustad Ubudi, come. Allah, come. Hadith goes out, you know. Come. Let him come. Bismillah. Come. Shah, come here. Tell us about the virtues of seeking knowledge, please. Allahu Akbar. Takbir. The name is Big Izzuddin. I'm going to marry my daughter, Shal. She's called Nusayba if you behave. Bismillah. No, he knows. Let him give us any hadith. He knows. Bismillah. Bismillah. Now, just one hadith. No preaching. Pure American. And he's swagging and stand straight, brother. <laughs> Who is the narrator of that hadith? <laughs> An Abi Huraira. What is the meaning of that hadith? Uh, the meaning of the hadith is whoever seeks a way uh, to knowledge, Allah will make a path to him, path to Jannah, and to seek the knowledge easy for him. Whoever, seek, whoever follows a path to seeking knowledge, Allah will make easy for him a way to Jannah. Allahu Akbar. How is that, brothers? This is one of the students. At least he got that hadith. I really want you to register with the, our ongoing classes. Don't worry if you, if you don't know one. Inshallah, you're going to know one, another one. Once a week, one hour, two hours only. Khair, Kamal, we good, right? Yeah. You, know how, you know how they say, um, an hour per day keeps the doctor away? Uh, you know, Naya, uh, a hadith a day. You know, inshallah, we can just shaitan with it, correct? So, I'm gonna call Adan. One brother should call Adan. Assalamu alaikum. Give a hand. Give a hand. Give a hand. Alhamdulillah. Good.
الحمد لله نعم 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 I'm gonna recruit him. He's hired, right? Plus, who knows the who doesn't know dua after Adam? Can we say Allahumma Rabba Hadihi Dawati Tama Basalati Al Qaima Ati Muhammad Al Wasilata والفضيلة وابعثه مقاما محمود الذي وعدته It's simple, right? اللهم رب هذه دعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة وابعثه مقاما محمود الذي وعدته اللهم رب هذه دعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة وابعثه مقاما محمود الذي وعدته slowly slowly إن شاء الله right if you know it الحمد لله if you don't know it this is one of the benefits of congregating and you know going through this basic teaching and so if we do it throughout the year somebody who was maybe missing a portion of it is gonna is going to be accommodated. Jazakumullah khair. How who is going to lead Salah? Ya Kamal. One of the new should lead Salah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. 
Where is the Muaji? Well, I'm so happy to see that, you know, you own the masjid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. Hayya ala salati, hayya ala al-falah. Faqamati salati, faqamati salah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Zudin, use this one when you go for ruku or sujood there. Because of, yes, sisters. Social distancing is important. We can... Are we not so close, Ayakama? Yeah. If some of us can go back at, at the back. Good. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين والعاليات ضبها فالموليات قبها فالمغيرات صبها فاعترن به نقعا فاوتقن به جمعا إن الإنسان لربه لكمود وإنه على ذلك لشهيد وإنه لرب الخير لكبير أفلا يعلم إذا وقر ما في القبور وحصل ما في الصدور إن ربهم بهم يومئذ لا خبير الله أكبر صلى الله لمن حمده الله أكبر Allah was with الله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا أنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك فكرك فإن مع الأسر يسرى إن مع الأسر يسرى فإذا فرقت فانصب وإلى ربك فارغب الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر Thank you.
Allah Akbar Allah is good.
Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillah al-karim. Jazakallahu khairan everybody for coming through. Hope you guys benefited a lot and enjoyed each other's company. Inshallah after the sunnah, uh, we have donuts for everyone. And we also have, you know, the ping pong table and stuff. So socialize, you know, feel, feel at home, feel comfortable, inshallah. And see you guys after, you know, two weeks for the next week group. And also see you after daily prayer and dinner, inshallah. Jazakallahu khairan.